On example one, we want to graph y equals 3 to the x. We want to state the domain and range. So just like anything, if you don't know how to start it, let's go back and start with the table. So we have x, whoops, there we go, and 3 to the x power. And nice things happen around 0. So I'm going to put 0 for x. I'm going to have some negatives and some positives. Remember, anything to the 0 power is 1. So 3 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the first power is 3. 3 to the second power is 9. I stopped at 2 because now I'm going to get really big. Like 3 to the third would be 27. 3 to the negative, remember, negative exponent means reciprocal. So 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. And then 1 ninth. So what happens when you're at 0, we're up here at 1. When I'm at 1, I'm up at 3. 1, 2, 3. And then when I'm at 2, I'm way up here at 9. And then I got fractions here. I got when you're at negative 1, we're at a third. When I'm at negative 2, I'm at 1 ninth. So my graph looks like that. Now you can use technology. You can see it a lot easier. If you just go into Desmos, we graph that. We can see that same thing. The domain. Remember, any number in this can be an x. x can be any number on my graph. It goes on forever. However, y, notice y can't be negative. So that's your range. So we're going to state that our domain is all real numbers. And our range, oh, you have to restart my iPad. It's not reading my pen very well. So my range is going to be positive numbers. So y is greater than or equal to 0. Now, just like we did in every other unit with transformations, exponential have their own transformations. If you subtract from the exponent, you're going to move your graph left and right, horizontally. It's x minus h. If you add k, it's a vertical translation, so you're going to move your graph up. And if you have a number in front of b that's not 1, if it's less than 0, we're going to reflect it over the x-axis. If it's greater than the absolute value is between 0 and 1, you're going to compress it vertically. And if it's bigger than 1, we're going to stretch it vertically. So we'll, we'll do the same thing on example two, we'll make a table. So I've got x and y, but y I'm going to call 2 to the x plus 1. And I think I'll put 0 right in the middle of my table again. I'll go 0, 1, 2, 3. And I'll go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. I'll start with 2 to the 0 is 1 plus 1, my graph, I want, wanted to make sure we're adding 1. It's not in the exponent. It's 2 to the x plus 1. So 2 to the 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 to the first is 2, plus 1 is 3. 2 to the second is 4, plus 1 is 5. 2 to the third is 8, plus 1 is 9. Well, 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half, so you're at 1 and a half, which I think I'll write as 1.5. And then 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth, so that would be 1.25. And then 2 to the negative 3 would be 1 ninth, so that would be 1.1. Now let's graph this using technology so we can see it. So we have 2 to the x plus 1. So I'm going to go back up here, and I'm going to make this 2 to the x. And I'll get out of my exponent, and I'll say plus 1. Notice what happens here. That plus 1 shifts my graph up 1. So my range starts at 1 rather than starting at 0. 
but my domain doesn't change at all. So then we're going to have our domain. So first off, let's draw the asymptote through one. And my graph looks like that. Okay. And so now my domain is all real numbers. My range starts at 1, so we're going to say y is greater than 1. 